So, after going through optical microscope, uh, let us uh, see some more uh, problem with any optical system. Okay. So, already we have seen the one of the issues with uh, any microscope which is related to resolution uh, that how close I can bring two objects and still I will be able to see them as two different entities. Other than that, there are more problem with optical uh, optical system, and these are called optical aberrations. Okay, you must be wondering. For example, you can get a, a, a camera uh, for, for like three thousand rupees, five thousand rupees, and uh, the price of a camera can go up to uh, one lakh rupees. Okay, in in a SLR camera. And you must be wondering that why some cameras are coming so cheap, they are getting you the same photograph. Okay. In case of optical microscope also, you will see that some optical microscopes are coming as cheap as 25,000 or 30,000 rupees and some uh, optical microscopes are costing us around 3 or 4 lakh rupees. Okay. So, there is a large variation in the prices of cameras or microscope and so on. And one of the reason for uh, this wide uh, variation in the price, pricing is because how you produce this optical systems, okay, basically lenses and whether they are aberration free or not. Okay. So, just making a lens or an optical system aberration free add to the cost okay and uh, i tell you it is very expensive to make a perfect optical system okay so that you can get rid of all the aberrations in the optical system which in, which are introduced because of the lenses which we use okay so when you buy a, uh, or your friend buy a expensive uh, camera okay don't make fun of him because he has spent money in getting that kind of optical system. So, in our, in our ideal optical system, okay, basically what we want is that all rays which are coming from the object, they should uh, fall on the same point to get a very clear and sharp image. Okay. But this is not what happens. Okay. You have uh, variation in the focal point depending upon uh, different uh, type of abrasions. Okay. So, basically because of this abrasion, the light focuses at different point okay. and we will see that what are these different abrasions. Okay. Some are because of uh, uh, the lens, okay. some are because of the uh, light or electromagnetic radiation which we use. Okay. So, we categorize or classify this abrasion based on that. Okay. So, one of the uh, most important abrasion is uh, called spherical abrasion okay. and as you can uh, see on the slide, uh, it says the rays furthest from the optical axis focus near the lens then the rays closer to the optic axis. Okay. So, let me show you uh, this particular abrasion by a schematic here. Okay. Again, I am making a lens here okay. and suppose uh, I have a, a, a light source, okay. let us say I am getting all parallel rays here on the lens. Okay. So, in this uh, ray, uh, ray diagram, I, these the rays which are closer to the edge of the lens, these are called marginal rays. Okay, all these rays are called marginal rays and the rays which are closer to optic are called paraxial rays. Okay. Now, the spherical abrasion says that the rays which are marginal rays, they have focus at a, a, a focal point which is closer to the lens. Okay, and this paraxial rays, let me draw it with some other pen, okay, they kind of focus at a, uh, at a, at a position further away from the lens. Okay. 
So there are two focal points depending upon from which part of the lens the rays are converging. Okay, uh, a photograph uh, sent by one of my friend and his name is also uh, given there. He gave me this photograph and you can see that in the center the image looks uh, focused, okay. but the features which are on the periphery of that okay they are all look slightly out of focus of course there is some kind of day change in the angle also of that particular feature but the main thing to see here is that uh, when you look at the outer portion okay they look out of focus and that you can see in your normal magnifying lens also which we uh, use at home okay and you try to read it any newspaper or anything or you try to see any object using this okay and what you will notice that you are reading only from the center of the lens okay because that is where you are focusing or your focus is best okay and the remaining portion okay is kind of slightly out of focus okay the the rays which are coming from the periphery of the lens so what happens now suppose i keep my screen or my eye at this point okay what will happen the features which are on the outer side of the lens that will be in focus and the features which are in the coming from the center of the lens they will be out of focus if i change the position of a screen to this one okay what will happen now the center portion features are clear to me but outer portions are usually out of focus okay and that is what you can see in this particular image in the slide also that the center portion looks more or less focused but the outer portion is looking out of focus okay so that is what is the spherical aberration okay so usually good lenses or good microscope are in that this particular problem is taken care okay so you won't see a spherical aberration the next one comes because of the light or the electromagnetic radiation which we use okay and this is called chromatic aberration okay so what is chromatic aberration it occurs when a range of wavelength is present in the light so our visible light our white light or white radiation has multiple uh, wavelengths okay it is composed of a range of wavelengths okay from red up to blue uh, green blue and so on okay and uh, when this kind of light goes through a single lens okay it ca causes light to be deviated by an amount depending on its wavelength okay so blue will be the closest to the lens and red will be further away from the lens okay so again let me uh, draw a schematic here so this is my lens okay and suppose a white light is being uh, is falling on the objective here objective lens here okay or any lens here okay now depending upon the wavelength so this uh, this particular ray which is composed of different wavelengths okay now it will get converged depending upon its wavelength so as we said the blue will be the closest okay then comes the green wavelength okay and then you will have red one okay slightly draw it better okay so now what happens in this case if my screen or my eye if it is here okay at the blue one so blue a uh, blue image will be clear and there will be a halo of red and green around the um, around the image okay if my eye or screen is here then the red reddish uh, that image will be clear 
and there will be a blue halo around the image ok. So, there will be a multi uh, after the features or whatever is the age of a building or something ok. You will get some multiple colors next to that particular image. For example, here a pigeon is shown I have taken it from this website ok and you can see that there is a red halo around the where the edge of this uh, his uh, the body of the pigeon is there ok there is a red halo around that ok. So, because we are not focusing at that particular image ok that particular halo is being, being shown here ok. So, this kind of multiple image ok. So, one, one light is uh, uh, diffracted into different rays ok and you will get this multiple image of different colors ok superimposed on each other. Okay, and that will of course, bring down the clarity of the images you can see in these two images this one is very clear ok does not have that problem and this one has the problem and you cannot see features for example, if you want to see the sharpness of the beak, beak, beak of this particular pair, uh, pigeon is not clear where it is in this case it is very clear ok. So, this is what is the chromatic aberration. Uh, usually, because of the uh, multiple or range of uh, wavelength we if you use in a uh, visible light ok. The next comes is astigmatism ok and this what happens that depending upon the plane through which uh, the rays is pa are passing ok your image the focal point will change depending upon that ok. So, let us take for example, this lens ok. So, if my image is going through this vertical plane ok that will have a different focal point than the image which is going through the this horizontal plane. So, it will have a different focal point ok. Of course, it is little bit difficult to draw this thing. So, I have taken it this particular image from a, again another website ok. So, this red one light which is going through the vertical plane ok it has a focus at some point here and the yellow light which is going through the horizontal plane of the lens has a different focal point ok. This type of uh, problem also come in a human eye ok. So, a lot of time uh, the people who wear uh, uh, glasses or maybe some of your friend who wear glasses ok if they do not have this astigmatism problem th their lens will be on the prescription if you go to the doctor it will be written as spherical ok spherical lens of this much power. If you have astigmatism ok then in your prescription it will also be written as cylindrical ok there will be a cylindrical lens uh, uh, in conjunction with the spherical lens ok to correct the astigmatism which has come in your eye. For example, in my case also I have in my right eye I have, I have astigmatism. So, my lens has some power of a spherical lens and some power of this cylindrical lens ok to correct the astigmatism in my eye. So, basically again the problem is the lies uh, the rays which are coming from in this vertical plane has a different focal point and which is coming from the horizontal plane has a different focal point. So, to correct that ok to make the image at the same uh, at the retina ok both should come at the same point ok. I have to have a cylindrical cylindri uh, cylindrical uh, lens is also there uh, coupled with the spherical one ok. You, you would not be able to see the difference in your glasses, but it will be there ok. So, this is the problem which we call as astigmatism two different image will be forming depending upon the from which plane the rays are going ok. Now, of course, when you have these problems there must be corrections also and as I told you then that when you do all these corrections that add to the cost of the uh, microscope or a, a camera for example ok. So, there are few uh, lenses which are available in the market ok. So, when you when you want to buy a microscope or if you go in the market to buy a microscope you have to specify that I want this particular objective or this particular eyepiece ok. So, one of the cheapest one in this is what we call as achromatic objectives. As you can see it is a combination of uh, 
convex lens and a concave lens, half concave and they are made of two different materials okay, to change the refractive index and by doing all this jugglery of combination and two different refractive index, they are able to correct the uh, chromatic abrasion here and they are able to uh, bring all the wavelengths together at one single point. Okay. So, in achromatic objectives, they are corrected chromatically for red and blue light, okay. they bring it to common focus. It is also corrected for spherical abrasion for the color green. Okay. So, green light for green light, they have also corrected it for uh, spherical abrasions. Okay. Now, you will understand if you have gone into your uh, metallography lab, a okay, lot of time we use these green filters. Okay. So, what this green filter does that one thing it does is that it has eliminated all other wavelengths from your uh, light. Okay. So, you have only one radiation now which is green. So, you do not have to worry about chromatic uh, abrasion because you are using only one wavelength. The other thing is that some of these lenses as for example, achromatic objectives are corrected for green light for spherical abrasion. Okay. So, using a green filter get, get you a, uh, a much better result because chromatic abrasion will not be there, spherical abrasion will not be there okay, because the lens is corrected for that. Okay, and that is why in black and white imaging it works better uh, in this case with green filter because most of your abrasions are taken care of. Okay. Then there are uh, more uh, complicated uh, lenses uh, in the market okay. and these are called semi apochromates. Okay. These objectives are corrected chromatically for red and blue light and also uh, they are closer to the green focus. The fluorides are corrected spherically for two colors blue and green. Okay. So, now they the spherically also they have corrected in this particular lens for both blue and green. Okay. The next uh, the, which is the uh, one of the most expensive objective is apochromatic objectives. These objectives are corrected chromat chromatically for four colors do deep blue, blue, green and red and they are spherically corrected for two or three colors deep blue, blue and green. Okay. And in the, on the slide you can also see that these uh, different lenses are shown here. Okay, so, first one is achromat, uh, uh, 10x achromat, second one is 10x fluoride or semi apochromates and the third one here is again 10x apochromate. Okay. And just look at the complexity of the lenses here. Okay. When we see uh, a, a microscope, we see this objective or this eyepiece, we think there must be one lens which we usually draw uh, as a schematic and we think well, there will be one lens and it is doing all the job, okay. but it is not so. You see it that there are so many double lenses are there, one will be convex, one will be concave or half concave, there is another doublet here. So, this whole big uh, lens piece contains so many different small lenses in combination. Okay. Also, this material for each of these lenses will also be different, it will not be same. Okay, as we just saw in the previous example. Okay. Now, if you go from achromate to fluoride, in achromate only two doublet, doublets were there. Now, there are four doublets, okay. uh, some meniscus lens is there, then some doublet here, another doublet here, one more. So, now you see that complexity of uh, objective has increased and now you have to add these many objectives in the system okay. and these many lenses in the system with different combinations. Okay. And for each of this lens, okay, the making is a very uh, tedious process, you have to have a very nice uh, curvature on that. Okay. For example, astigmate is also if you see, it is a making a manufacturing defect. Okay. So, while making the lens, okay, you could not maintain the same radius of curvature at each point, okay. somewhere the radius of curvature has changed okay. and that is why in vertical plane and horizontal plane, okay, you have different focal point. So, astigmatism is a manufacturing defect okay, which you can eliminate if you do, if you have a better manufacturing 
capabilities okay so when you add these many lenses okay you can see that for each lens uh, you have to have good manufacturing capability to get lens without any defect in the lens okay then of course apochromate you see more complexities okay more lenses are there okay so you can understand that the the cost of the microscope increases almost exponentially with change in the type of objective we are using okay so when you go to any uh, manufacturer and if he is saying that he is going to supply you apochromate okay he is going to charge you for that okay and uh, of course the quality of image which you will get will be exp uh, uh, exponentially better than what you will get from a simple achromate okay so these are some websites which uh, from which we took some of the images here okay so just to acknowledge that uh, we took and some uh, you you will also if you go through these website you will also understand the a uh, lot of details about microscope and of course camera and uh, uh, other optical systems okay and with that uh, i would like to say thank you today okay i think this particular lecture will be of interest to you because you understand that how microscopes are made and what are the different components of a microscope thank you